I would request all of you to please repeat after me. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya So this first part I would like to recite and explain some mantras which will help us to appreciate who this Lord Ram is. This first mantra, keep in mind mantra means a sound vibration which delivers the mind. The mind is normally in material consciousness, but a mantra takes the consciousness, the mind, and puts it on the transcendental or spiritual platform. Of course, those of you who know this Hare Krishna movement, you know that we chant the Maha Mantra. And I always like to make a little joke, the mantra on steroids. <laughs> so let's begin. Everyone raise your hand, the Maha Mantra together. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram. So this first prayer is by a great Vaishnava poet, Jayadev Goswami. And he is famous for his book, Gita Govinda, which is all about Krishna attracting Srimati Radharani by playing his celebrated flute. And the introduction to his book is a prayer called Dashavata Stotram. And the seventh of that Stotram is this prayer. Vitarasi Dikshurane Dikpati Kamaniyang Dashamukamauli Balim Ramaniyang Keshavadrita Rama Sharira Jai Jagadisha Hare Keshavadrita Rama Chandra Rupa Jai Jagadisha Hare Jai Jagadisha Hare So in this introductory stotram he keeps repeating this line that Keshavadrita and then he names because he wants to inform us that there are so many different incarnations but whose incarnations Keshava and Keshava is that person who has very fine black hair. Keshava means that he is famous for killing one demon, Keshi. And Keshava means that he is the controller of both Lord Brahma and Lord Shiva. So who is that Keshava? He's on the altar right now. Sri Krishna Bhagavan Ki. So, this Krishna also appeared as Lord Ram. Everybody say that beautiful name. Ram. One more time. Ram. One more time. Ram. Oh, I see that you are all already very elevated today. This is good. That means this lecture is a no brainer because you're already on an elevated platform. That makes my job so much easier. And I know now how to proceed. O Keshava, O Lord of the universe, O Lord Hari, you have assumed the form of Ramachandra. All glories to you. In the battle of Lanka, you destroyed the ten-headed demon Ravan. 
and you distribute his heads as a delightful offering to the presiding deities of the ten directions. Someone may say ten directions, yes. North, south, east, west. Northwest, southwest, northeast, northwest. Two more, up, down, ten directions. According to the Vedas, we have a note from the boss. I'm sorry to interrupt, Mr. Boo, but someone used to get out of our parking lot on the side of the building here, and there's a, a brownish Accord Honda, and it's parked right in the middle. There's two people that want to get out, and they can't. Do you have that vehicle? A light brown a Honda Accord? Please move it. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Those ten directions are headed by Indra. This action was long desired by all of them who were much harassed by this monster. So the next mantra will give you some insight into why you should chant this word Rama. Everybody. Ramante yogi no nante satyananda chid atmani iti rama padena sao parang brahma bidhiyate. The supreme absolute truth is called Ram because transcendentalists take pleasure in the unlimited true pleasure of spiritual existence. So, as we are all living spiritual souls. By nature, we're pleasure seeking. You can't deny it. That's part and parcel of who we are. We're pleasure seeking. The question becomes, on what platform will you choose to seek your pleasure? We learn from the Bhagavad Gita on the material plane you can seek pleasure in the mode of ignorance. For instance, Las Vegas. <laughs> People there are seeking pleasure, but it is in the mode of darkness or ignorance. Then you have the general mass of people, especially here in Los Angeles. They are seeking pleasure in the mode of passion. Work hard, get money. Eat, drink, and be merry. Yeah. <laughs> then there is happiness in the mode of goodness. You control your senses. You don't give in to every whim. You seek knowledge. And you try to be, as the Indian people say, Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Or the hippies say, peace man. <laughs> yes, the mode of goodness is calm, peaceful. But we learn from Krishna and Bhagavad Gita, all these three different pleasures are still material, meaning they have a beginning, middle, and end. But this Rama, everybody, Rama. notice unlimited true pleasure of spiritual existence. This pleasure is spiritual, transcendental. So the more you can tap in and hear and chant this sound vibration, Ram, you are now enjoying on a different platform. That platform is ever increasing, step by step by step. It's always increasing. Now there's some more about this name, Ram. This is actually one of my favorites. Rama, Rameti, Rameti. Rame, Rame, Mano, Rame. Sahasra, Nama, Bistulyang. Rama, Nama, Varanane. Now this verse, the great, great devotee, Lord Shiva, is speaking to his wife. And I always like this. Husbands take a cue from Lord Shiva. He addresses his wife as Varanana, O oh, beautiful faced. So men get a clue <laughs> when you need something. Address your spouse 
with nice words. Oh, Devi. Oh, my blessed goddess. Flattery, get, I know from experience, flattery gets you anything you want. So Lord Shiva is speaking to his wife. He says, Lord Shiva says, I chant. So Lord Shiva, he is also a chanter. How many of you consider yourself a chanter? That's all? If you're not a chanter, then you're a ranter. <laughs> Everybody who comes here should be a chanter. Yes. So Lord Shiva says, I chant the holy name of three times together. Ram, Ram, Rama. And thus enjoy this beautiful sound. Now listen to what Lord Shiva says. This holy name of Ramachandra is equal to 1,000 holy names of God. 1,000. So, sometimes you'll hear people say, oh, you should chant Vishnu Sahasranam. Lord Shiva says, no. Just chant Ram. One utterance of Ram is the same as chanting 1,000 names of God. Take shortcut method. Chant name of Ram. Everybody. Ram. One more. Ram. One more. Ram. Very good. And now, this last mantra will bring us into part two of my lecture. Those who are familiar with the story of Ramayan, it's a great epic very, very exciting narration of Ram, Sita, Lakshman, and Hanuman. Yes, the great devotee Hanuman. So, here is what Hanuman himself says. He says, Bhava Banda Chide Tasyai, Sprihayami Na Muktaye, Bhavan Prabhur Ahang Dasa. Iti yatra vilupyate. So, at some point, after Ram was able to get Sita back because he, she was stolen by that ten-headed monster, Ravan, and Ram and his monkey army, they decimated Ravan's capital, and finally... Ravan was killed by the arrow of Ramachandra and there was the very heartwarming uh, reuniting of Sita and Ram. At some point, Ram wanted to give Hanuman a benediction because Hanuman did so much service for Ram. It was Hanuman who leaped over the ocean it was Hanuman who discovered where Sita was hiding in the Ashoka Grove. It was Hanuman when his tail was set on fire, he danced through Lanka and burnt it. So Hanuman did so much service for Ram. So at one point Ram said, I want to give you a benediction. But what did Hanuman say? I do not wish to take liberation from you. I do not want to merge in your Brahman effulgence. No. Why? Because if I do that, I will lose this conception of being your servant. Hanuman's ecstasy is he simply wants to serve Lord Ram. This is the teaching of this Hare Krishna movement. This is the teaching of Lord Chaitanya. The devotee's aspiration, my Lord, I simply want to serve you. The very meaning of the Hare Krishna mantra, O energy of God, O Hara 
Mother Radha. Oh, Krishna, please engage me in your service. The material conception is what? Everybody should serve me because I'm so wonderful. That's the material conception, right? But the spiritual conception is, my Lord, please just give me some little service. That's all I want. And of course, a little prasad. <laughs> but the devotee only wants service. And Hanuman is addressed as Bhaktaraj, the king of the bhaktas, the king of the devotees. And that is why. He could have gotten anything from Lord Ram. But he said, no. I don't want any, I just want to remain your servant. I'm sure, I don't care how great a job you have, you're not going to go to your boss. Boss, you don't have to pay me. I will work for you life after life. You, are you going to say that to your boss? I don't think so. But if God was to come to you right now, I think you would all say that. And he is here right now before you. So you can say that right now. You can say right now, my Lord, I simply want to be your eternal servant. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Ram, Ram. Now there was man one mantra I didn't prepare but it was just sent to me by text message from Krishna in the heart. <laughs> and there's a nice statement in the Ramayan, in the Ramayan, Lord Ram. And it is quoted by Lord Chaitanya in his teachings to Sanatan Goswami, where Lord Ram says at one point, anyone who sincerely surrenders to me that person I will never forget. You just have to experience, feel that, say that once in your life. My Lord Ram, I am your servant. And Lord Ram will never forget you. And if you read Ramayan, it would be good to have Ram on your side. Because he's invincible. Okay, now are you ready to hear the Hanuman Stotra? Are you ready to hear? If you are, say, Hare Ram. Hare Ram. Very good. That strong chanting is giving me encouragement and enthusing me. Yes. Yes. You see in the Bhagavatam how there are different conversations. So from time to time, you'll see how Shukadev Goswami gets encouragement because Parikshit is asking very nice questions. And the same way with Maitreya and Vidura, the, the speaker becomes more enlivened when he sees that the audience is very attentive and is capable of going on to higher subjects. Are you ready to go to higher subjects? Yes. You sure? Yes. All right, once we go there, I can't go back. All right. So in the Srimad Bhagavatam, the fifth canto, we are given a brief tour of different dwipas, islands, sections of this planetary system. So there is one... Varsha called Kim Purusha. And so let's hear now Shukadeva Goswami is going to tell us. So Shukadeva Goswami is saying, My dear King Parikshit, in Kim Purusha Varsha, the great devotee Hanuman is always engaged with the inhabitants of that land in devotional service to Lord Ramachandra the elder brother of Lakshman and dear husband of Sita Devi. So, just for our purification, 
Ramachandra had three brothers. We just heard Lakshman. He had a brother Bharat and Shatrugna. And the Prabhupada says, all of these are God, Vishnu Tattva. And Sita is the manifestation of the goddess of fortune, Lakshmi. Okay. A host of Gandharvas is always engaged in chanting the glories of Lord Ramachandra. That chanting is always extremely auspicious. So what we're doing tonight, this is also extremely auspicious. Just listening to this kata, you are making great spiritual advancement just by listening. Hanumanji and Arshtashena, the chief person in Kim Purusha Barsha, constantly hear those glories with complete attention. So that'll be the trick. Can you listen with complete attention? I will try my best to get you there, but you have to want to listen with complete attention so that you get the full benefit. Hanuman chants the following mantra. So there's six of them. So here they are. Number one, Hanuman says, Let me please your lordship by chanting the Bij Mantra Omkar. So let's all do that. Everybody, Om. I wish to offer my respectful obeisances unto the personality of Godhead who is the best among the most highly elevated personalities. So Hanuman is reminding us that Lord Ram is in his role, he's God, but in his role as Lord Ram, he's showing us the perfect example of how a human being should live. If you look through the Ramayan, every thought, word, and deed of Ram was completely exemplary. Because he's teaching us by his example, this is who we should emulate. You can't imitate, but you can emulate, follow in his holy footsteps. Your Lordship is the reservoir of all the good qualities of Aryans, people who are advanced. Aryans means they live a regulated life according to the Vedas and they have as their priority spiritual advancement. A materialist is someone whose priority in life is name, fame, Profit, adoration, money, 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 sweeter than honey. <laughs> That's a materialist. But an Aryan, no. The priority of life is religiousness, truthfulness, austerity, compassion, mercy, God consciousness. And R Lord Ram exemplified that. When Lord Ram was cheated out of the kingdom by the trick of his, one of his other mothers, Kaikei, there were so many people giving Ram advice. Ram, you don't have to do this. Even Lakshman said, I will kill our father because he has gone crazy. He said that at one point. So time after time after time, his mother, even his mother said, am I not as good as your father? You should obey me. Don't go to the forest. You should take the throne. And so many others, even his brother Bharat said, I'll take your place in the forest. You come and sit on the throne. But no matter what anybody said, Ram said, no. I must Keep the word of my father. So this is one of the big lessons of the Ramayan. 
that holding fast to truth and executing the will of the Father. Those of us who have accepted Srila Prabhupada as our spiritual father, we should be like that also. That we will execute the will of our spiritual father. And what is that will? His will is that he wants you to execute and spread this movement. That's all he wants. Each and every one of us, in your own way, try to push on this movement, dare I say, his movement, his Hare Krishna movement. That's how we can execute his will. He simply wants us to give it, expand it, spread it, like that. Who would like to help Srila Prabhupada execute that? Very good. Excellent. Very good. As I've been saying a lot lately, time is approaching. The Prabhupada disciples like myself are one at a time dying off. What's going to happen? Who will take the mantle? Who will carry the torch? You. Yes. Are you ready? Jai, she's ready. Very good. Everybody chant the Maha Mantra. Hanuman continues, Lord Ram, your character and behavior are always consistent and you always control your senses and mind, acting just like an ordinary human being. You exhibit exemplary character to teach others how to behave. So if you don't have the time or you don't have access to read the entire Ramayan, that's all right. Shukadeva Goswami in the Srimad Bhagavatam in two chapters gives you a gist summary. And if you read all of Prabhupada's purports to those two chapters, you'll know everything you need to know about Ramayan. So, how many, does everybody have the entire collection of Srimad Bhagavatam that's given by ISKCON? If you don't, get it. The devotee outside, Shastra Krit, he'll be more than happy to get you your own copy of Srimad Bhagavatam. Very good. Hanuman continues, there is a touchstone that can be used to examine the quality of gold. But you are like a touchstone that can verify all good qualities. You are worshipped by brahmanas who are the foremost of all devotees. Lord Ram, you are the supreme person, the king of kings, and I therefore offer my respectful obeisances unto you. So Lord Ram is the king of kings because... Everything he did, perfectly executed. Prayer number two, Hanuman says, The Lord, whose pure form is Satchit Ananda Vigraha. So, what does that mean? Satchit Ananda. His body is eternal. Is this body eternal? No. Mm -mm. No, ha ha. No Botox, no nothing is going to make this body eternal. You see it every day in the mirror. Ooh. Ooh. Every day you, you are being reminded this body is not eternal. Chid, full of knowledge. Huh? You went to school, you went to college, how come? <laughs> this body is not full of knowledge. What's it full of? Ignorance. And then Ananda, you get up in the morning, oh, oh. and throughout the day, headache, stomach, nah. 
this body is not Ananda. But Ramachandra's body being spiritual is eternal, full of knowledge and full of bliss. And that is actually originally who we are. Originally we are also Satchitananda, but something's happened. But by this Krishna consciousness movement, by following Lord Ram and Lord Krishna, you will regain your original spiritual body. It's there, it's covered. Otherwise, why do you repeatedly hear this word in Prabhupada's books? Back to Godhead, right? Back means, hmm, back? You mean I was once there? Yes. <laughs> Is that where I originally come from? Yes. And by following Prabhupada and Lord Ram, I'm going to go back there? Y you got it. That's why this movement is so great. One day, all of us here will be together with Lord Ram or Lord Krishna back in our original home. Can't wait to see you there. And if you get there before me, put in a good word, please. <laughs> yes. Back home, back to Godhead. And if anybody tells you any different, say, no, Prabhupada said. This is what Prabhupada teaches over and over and over again. Back. Back means you were already there. And I know some people, no. That's what Prabhupada says. Back. You were originally there. So, Lord Ram's body is uncontaminated by the modes of material nature. And he can be perceived by pure consciousness. So pure consciousness is Krishna consciousness. And Prabhupada also spoke on that. Our original consciousness is Krishna consciousness. Again, same concept. Our original consciousness is Krishna consciousness. Pure consciousness. In the Vedanta... Ram is described as being one without a second. That's the definition of God. One without a second. No applications being accepted. The position of God is already fulfilled. Okay, you cannot become God. You're either God or you're the servant of God. Sorry. So, he's one without a second, no competitor. One without a no one equal to, no one greater. Asamordva is another way of saying that. Asamordva, no one equal, no one greater. Because of his spiritual potency, he is untouched by the contamination of material nature. Just like the sun the sun is all-powerful. Nothing can contaminate the sun. The sun is so powerful, it can clean a filthy pond. But the sun remains unaffected. Because why? The sun is all-powerful. Lord Ram being God, all-powerful. Nothing can contaminate him. And not only can he not be contaminated, Anyone that comes in contact with him becomes purified. Therefore, you'll see these two words in Prabhupada's Ishopanishad. Prophylactic, antiseptic. That's the idea. He never becomes contaminated and you come in contact with him, you become purified. Because he is not subjected to material vision, he is known as transcendental. He has no material qualities, nor has he a material form or name. That's why we chant these names of God. When we first started this movement, the critics back in the 60s thought, oh, you guys are trying to hypnotize yourself. 
So we can chant Coca-Cola, Coca-Cola, Cola, Cola, Coca, Coca. That's what they, they actually used to say like that. So we would say, go ahead, you chant Coca-Cola, see how far you get. We're going to chant Hare Krishna. There's a big difference between material sound and spiritual sound. You cannot make up the name of God. The, God's name is transcendental. You heard previously this name Ram. Everybody say one more time. Ram. That is a transcendental sound vibration. It has immense potency. So we chant the names of God. Only in pure consciousness, Krishna consciousness, can one perceive the transcendental form of the Lord. Yes, right now we're still on the material platform. Because of that, we cannot see God who is in our heart. God is right there in your heart, the closest thing to you, but you can't see. Why? You still, I still have material vision, but you gradually continue to chant these names of God more and more and with more attention and more feeling, little by little by little, God reveals himself. There's an actual word, sparakti. He reveals. And one day, you will look here at the temple, or you'll be walking down the street, or you'll be, when you least expect it, bam! Krishna will reveal himself to you. That day is coming. That's why every day I get up and I'm chanting because I'm thinking this could be the day when Krishna reveals himself. And if it's not today, maybe tomorrow, but I'm going to keep trying. And even if it takes me one million lifetimes. But you know what Prabhupada says? Uh -huh. Back to Prabhupada. Prabhupada says, if you chant 16 rounds, that's 108 beads, right? Times 16, that's 1,728 mantras. If you do that every day and strictly follow the four no-nos, the four regulative principles, then you will go back home, back to Godhead in this lifetime. So, give one life to Prabhupada and Krishna. That's all you, just one. You've had millions and millions of life. I made that decision back in June, July of 1973. I was thinking, yeah, this life I'm giving to Prabhupada and Krishna. Best decision I ever made in my life. And that's why I'm here. And I urge you also, if you have not done so already, give this life to Prabhupada and Krishna and go back home, back to Godhead in this lifetime. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Let us be firmly fixed at the lotus feet of Lord Ramachandra and let us offer our respectful obeisances unto those transcendental lotus feet. Hanuman continues, prayer number three. It was ordained that Ravana, the chief of the Rakshasas, could not be killed by anyone but a man. Yes. And those who have studied Shakespearean literature, there's this concept, the tragic flaw. All of his heroes, they have this tragic flaw which does them in. Ravana, he is what we call hubris. His pride, his ego was so great, he had gotten... All these benedictions, practically speaking, he was invincible. He defeated all the demigods, including Yamaraj. And he even got from Lord Shiva a particular benediction. He was invincible, but his hubris, he didn't ask for a benediction not to be killed by a human or an animal. 
<laughs> God is smarter. Oh, so therefore God came as a human in the form of Lord Ram. And what was his army? His army was actually demigods, but they took birth as big, big monkeys. Bye-bye, Ravan. The clock is ticking. So, Ravan was defeated by an army of monkeys. And he couldn't believe it. When the battle was going on, he would send one general. Oh, this general will take... Nope. He sent one general after another. Then he started sending his own sons. And each of them was killed till finally there was no one left. Ravan had to go and fight Ram. Because there was nobody left. Everybody else was defeated by Lakshman, Hanuman, Ram, one after the other. And then Ravan came. And then Ram shot his arrow. Oh, and it says Ram was spitting blood from his ten heads. What a fitting ending. The rascal Ravan. For this reason, Lord Ram, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, appeared in the form of a human being. Now listen to what Hanuman says. Don't get mad at me. I'm just the messenger. Okay? This is Srimad Bhagavatam. All right? So be warned. Okay? And this is Hanuman. If you got a problem, talk to Hanuman. However, Lord Ram's mission was not only to kill Ravan, but to teach mortal beings. How many of us are mortal beings? Okay, if the shoe fits. Was to teach mortal beings that material happiness centered around sex or centered around one's wife is the cause of many miseries. <laughs> oh, good. No arrows? Thank you. Yes. Prabhupada even says that when Ravan stole Sita, Ramachandra could have said, Oh, one Sita, I can produce a thousand just like that. Ah, so what? He's got one Sita. No. Ravan took responsibility to give protection to his wife. So Prabhupada gives the lesson that if you have a wife, men, you have to give full protection. That's your duty. You have to give full protection. No matter how difficult, how painstaking it is, you must give support. You must give protection. You must maintain. You must satisfy. Ladies are going, I like this guy. <laughs> this guy is good. He is the self-sufficient supreme personality of Godhead. And nothing is lamentable for him. Therefore, why else could he be subjected to tribulations by the kidnapping of Mother Sita? So yes, there is a large description of how Sita, when she was separated from Ram, it appears that there's great lamentation. And Ram himself, there is so much extensive descriptions of how much anguish and how much supposed crying and suffering there was. But actually... It is not material. We cannot compare it to how we feel because Sita and Ram, even though they're on earth, they are still existing on a transcendental platform. So externally, it looks like there's crying. Externally, it looks like there's suffering, but actually... What they are experiencing is the topmost platform of spiritual realization, technically known as Vipralambha. 
Vipralamba, Lord Chaitanya teaches, is the highest spiritual ecstasy. What does it mean? It means that there is so much love between Sita and Ram, and there cannot be any separation, that this feeling of separation is actually great ecstasy. Now, materially, it makes no sense. That's all right. You don't have to try to understand it materially. We just take the words of Srila Prabhupada that what they are experiencing looks like crying, but actually they're feeling the highest spiritual ecstasy. As Lord Chaitanya felt when he came, he's Krishna coming as Lord Chaitanya and feeling the separation of Radha and Krishna. But it's spiritual ecstasy. Yes, materially it makes no sense. That's why when we come to spiritual subject matters, you have to be able to accommodate an elephant on a dish. If you can appreciate the possibility of an elephant on the dish, you got it. Or the other story, when Narada was asked, what was Lord Narayan doing? And the Lord told Narada what to say. Tell them I'm threading an elephant through the eye of a needle. And the Brahmin said, Narada, get out of here. You're bogus. But the simple cobbler, the low caste cobbler, when he asked Narada, what was the Lord doing? And Narada said, he's threading an elephant through the eye of a needle. The cobbler said, oh, that's so far out. My Lord is so great. And Narada said, you believe? He said, of course I believe. And he gave the example in this seed of the banyan tree. Little seed. But from that seed, what comes? Big, big banyan tree. The, the cobbler knew that the Lord is a chintya, inconceivable potency, inconceivable. That's what you need to get in order to understand all of this Krishna consciousness. Just appreciate that God is inconceivable. Since Lord Ramachandra is the Supreme Personality of Godhead, he is not attached to anything in this world. He is the most beloved super soul of all self-realized souls. And he is their very intimate friend. He is full of all opulences. Therefore, he could not have possibly suffered because of separation from his wife. Nor could he have given up his wife and Lakshman, his younger brother. Oh, this is a very nice statement by Hanuman. One cannot establish a friendship with the Supreme Lord Ram on the basis of material qualities such as your birth, your beauty, your eloquence, your sharp intelligence, your superior race or nation. None of these qualifications is actually a prerequisite for friendship with Lord Ram. What do you need? You just need love. You just need to love Lord Ram. Let us now love Lord Ram, Lord Krishna. Hare Krishna.